Hello, people. So this video is just a little introduction slash update on what's happening and what I'm going to be doing. Now, you know, I've been running my YouTube channel for probably over, over 10 years now. And, uh, you know, my, my primary focus has been shell scripts and stuff, but I've, I've done tutorials on so many different topics. Uh, and uh, I want to do some videos on the Godot game engine. That's Godot, I believe, is the proper way of pronouncing it. Um, there's a fly flying around. Um, <laughs> it's uh, spelt Godot, but I guess the T is silent. So Godot Game Engine, if you're unfamiliar with it, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, tell you why I pick it, and why I'm going to be doing some videos on it. How about that? Now, if you are one of the people who come here for shell script videos, don't worry, I'll still be doing those, but just wanted to get, let you know that I'm going to be doing a, a number of videos on this topic in the near future. And I'm not just going to be going over game stuff. I'm going to talk about using the Godot Game Engine just for creating applications. Why, Chris? Why? Well, first off, why Godot over something like Unity? Because that's those are two when you search for you know free game free game engines, those are what comes up. So I think the the obvious answer for me why I pick Godot over Unity is Godot is uh, open source. So let's talk about that a little bit. I've never tried Unity. I haven't been interested in it because it's proprietary software. It might be free to use, but it's not free. What does that mean? Well, that means that you as a game developer don't really own your game. Yeah, you own the source code that you write, but it's dependent on some proprietary software out there. And if they change things or just go defunct years from now, how long is your game going to last without some sort of emulation or people installing old uh, operating systems? You just, you have no control over your system. Your system, your, your program is dependent on somebody else's program that you have no control over. Where with Godot, it's open source. So even if they decide we're not going to develop this anymore, it's very popular. Someone will fork it. And if not, you can always still use their source code in future projects. Here's an example. Uh, think about if you were a Flash developer 10 years ago and you made some programs or games in Flash. Flash really doesn't exist anymore. No one, yes, there are open source projects that try to reverse engineer it. I don't even know if they're still around. Um, but you create a game in Flash 10 years ago, you love it. How functional is it now and how functional is it going to be in 10 years from now without installing an old operating system and getting old copy of Flash? It's just not going to happen. Just imagine that Unity might be around forever. It's very popular. But even if it is, you don't have control over it. If they make decisions in their game engine you don't like, you have no say over it. There's nothing you can do. That's what free software is about. So that's why I never even tried Unity. Uh, but I've been playing around with Godot. If you've been watching my channel, you know I've been working on some games. I did, I did a rewrite of a game I made years ago called Space Attack. I redid it and called Space Attack 2. It's, it's, it's a rewrite, remake, a little bit different sequel slash game. Uh, and, but then I've been working very hard the last two months on Cyber Griffin, which is a 2D style shooter uh, inspired by Doom. So it's Doom. It's using the Free Doom assets. So all the art, or most of the art and sounds are from the Free Doom project. Um, and I'm very excited about it. If you haven't checked it out, check out the links on my website or previous videos. It's up on my website. You can play it right in the web browser, although depending on your web browser, results may vary. But it compiles for all different operating systems since it's using the Godot engine, which is another great thing about Godot. And I'm sure I believe Unity's fairly well about this too, but I really don't know that much about Unity. But uh, when you write your code, you can package it for Android, for Linux, both 32, 64-bit, and ARM, Windows, Mac OS, and iOS, as well as compile it uh, to run in a web browser, or package it to run in a web browser. Uh, I use it, think it's using some WebAssembly to get the engine running, and then it uses your scripts from there in the pack file. Um, so, yeah, so I'm going to be going over that. And again, this is going to be focused, I'm going to call this here like app development, which I hate that term, but I'm doing that because I think the people who are going to be interested in this are going to be searching for that. So what does that mean, app development? And why do I do this when I say that? Um, I hate when I write a program and someone sees a little game or something and a friend of mine goes, oh, that's cool. You should turn that into an app. It's like, what, what do you think an app is, right? App is just a word that's short for application. What's an application? It's just another word for program or software. They're all the same thing. And there's people, I'll tell that to people, people go, oh, well, no, you know, uh, an app is something designed for a phone or a tablet. It's, it's a particular thing. No, no, it's, it's, it's package specific for, for iOS and Android. You're going to have whatever the extension is for an iOS package. Is it iOS? I don't know. Uh, for Android, it's an APK, an Android package, I guess. Uh, but that's just the wrapper. That's package. It could be anything inside there. Yes, the, the outside of it's going to be Java, but you don't have to write stuff in Java 
and compile it or package it as an APK to run on Android device. And I've shown before shell scripts, C programming, Perl, Python, all these stuff. You can write programs natively and they'll run on Android. It's just if you want to get in the app store, you're going to have to package it as an APK uh, to get it in the app store. Um, and to get certain permissions on an Android system, you're going to have to package it as an APK because it looks for these stupid permission things. Uh, but really, you write something in, in, in pretty much any language, as long as it's a decent language, should run on any device. And uh, I want to show that a little bit with, with Godot. We're, again, it's designed as a game engine, and it's not going to be the best option for all application design, but I'm going to show you how to create some very simple applications just to practice my skills and share it with you guys. It's gonna be a bunch of random things. My first two projects I think I'm gonna do videos on is one, making a basic clock application, and then one that gets your local weather. So you're gonna, we're gonna write this in Godot, a couple of lines of code, doesn't take much, design it so it looks halfway decent, and then with one click, you can export it and package it for all these different operating systems. And, uh, you know, it can, you'll be able to make an APK, or you could make a Linux binary, but there's reasons that you might want to make a pack file, which I'll talk about in a future video, and then allow your operating system to decide the executable. We'll talk about it in future videos. Um, but it's very, very easy to do. And uh, so, yeah, we're just going to do some cross-platform... Uh, GUI application design using Godot. I'll probably do some game stuff, but uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of stuff out there. I'm going to focus on just making basic applications. Again, the first two I already have thought out. Uh, clock application and one that grabs your weather from the internet, checks your local, your location and based on your IP address and uh, gives you your local weather and displays it with some image. And very, very basic, of course, you can expand on these. There's, there's already free applications and, and proprietary applications that do both these things. So to do it is just more just to do it, to be able to do something yourself, right? I'm going to show you how to do it. So even if, if, you know, if you want to avoid proprietary stuff, which, you know, there's already a clock and a weather app, I think, built into the Android project, which is going to be open source, maybe not a free license, but an open source license. But there's definitely ones under GPL that you can get. So why not not use those, right? Uh, so... Two reasons. One, again, to learn how to do it. And two, maybe there's custom features you want to put into it. Sometimes, even if the program, and the program's open source, if you're unfamiliar with their development over there, it, it might take you longer to figure out how their code works and then add your functionality into it rather than just create something simple from scratch that you can modify how you like. So, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys look forward to this. Again, if you're one of those people here who's here and you're not really interested in that, don't worry. I'm still going to be doing other videos, but I am going to do a number of videos in, in the next coming days or weeks. I don't even know how many I'm going to make. I don't even know all the ideas I'm going to have, but I'm just going to go over these things and uh, show you how to do it. So I hope you're looking forward to this. I thank you for watching. Visit filmsbychris.com. Oh, and all the, of course, all these videos I show you on this, I'll have the code up on GitLab so you can download it and, and package it yourself, make your changes. So again, filmsbychris.com, that's Chris the Gay. There's a link in the description. Uh, you can go there to search through my videos. Also links to all my projects and, and codes and stuff on there as well. If you like my videos, patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Link to that in the description as well. Also on my website, you can support me there monthly. If you like my videos and want to donate one time, I also have a PayPal link. I know there's better options out there, but that's just what I've been using. And um, if you, also, if you really like my videos, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, right? I got to say that as a YouTuber. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.